guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here to do a little video on kind of, you know, what I would deem like the importance of toppers um, for your junk journals. So for me personally, I like to create things with a focal point, with a topper. Um, and so I've created a little kit, um, well, two, two little kits here of um, these topper pieces. Now, hopefully these are going to all coordinate beautifully with the collections pages as well. Um, you know, but they also obviously, you know, they would coordinate with all sorts of pages and things. Um, but this is just my first, um, you know, couple of collections of these two types of things. And I may do more, obviously, depending on how well received they are. If there seems like there's, you know, kind of popularity or, you know, you like them or whatever, then I can always create more. Um, but I've created them really, you know, because I think having topper pieces, having focal points, that makes making things so much um, easier. So I'm just going to quickly show you um, the two kits. So basically we've got a bird themed one and then we've got what I'm calling the vintage themed one. So if I just kind of show you those. Now there's also for each one, you get a couple of large images as well. Um, just because I personally really like playing around with large, you know, the large images. Um, so yeah, oh, now I'm thinking. Sorry, they have become a little bit mucked up, um, you know, when I've been storing them. So I'm going to just quickly show you the large images. You get two um, frames on each of the large image pages and you've got a plain one. So you could obviously cut these out nice and easily. And then these could be like a pocket on a page, you know, completely on its own. Um, you know, being a nice kind of large image, you've got plenty of options with those. Um, and yeah, they are obviously, like I say, printed without a background. Then you've got the same images printed with a background. So that one there, I thought there was actually a second background page. I must have obviously got these mixed up. I've been printing galore and yeah, I've obviously kind of mucked these up. But anyway, um, this is one of the ones on the backgrounds. Oh my goodness, how beautiful does that look on that floral page? So this one, for example, you know, you could just print this off and use this as a page in a journal just exactly on its own. Just, you know, fold that in half. You could coffee dye it or not, you know, completely up to you. You know, maybe, I don't know, edge it with a bit of lace. I've just got some lace here. I'll just kind of show you. Oops. Sorry, it's kind of caught up with some other stuff. So now just trying to separate it. There we go. Um, you know, you could just put a bit of lace down the edge. Oh my goodness, what a gorgeous pocket that is. Or what you could do is you could kind of print this page off and then you could print a page of the plane off and you could recut out one of the frames and then you could pop that over or just a portion of it. So you could have that there and then cut out like the middle bit, you know, like decoupage kind of technique. So then you could have that layered up kind of over the top and it would have a slightly raised kind of um, pattern. So yeah, just kind of options for those types of things. And I just think it's nice to have different sizes. So you've got those. And of course, you know, you are not limited to how big you can print or well, you are limited to how big you can print them, sorry. But you're not limited to how small because you could always then print these two to a page. So then they'd be like half this size. You could print them four to a page. Obviously then they'd be smaller. So, you know, lots of options there with these. So these are the large images. Like I said, this is the bird collection, obviously. Then you've got these ones, which again, I'm pretty sure that there is a plain version of these two, um, you know, framed images as well. So you've got a plain version, just like you did with the other two images. Then you've got this one, which I just absolutely love it on this kind of neutrally colored damask. And then, oh my goodness, don't you love that color blue? Ah, just, oh, scrumptious, scrumptious color. So that's the bird one. And then what you've got is your kind of topper pieces, which are framed images of these birds. You've got nine altogether, um, just small images. So these are a bit like I've got these similar with the um, fashion plate um, ladies kind of items. And um, for me personally, you know, if I'm using as a topper, I absolutely love nothing better than if it's in a frame or, you know, something to kind of, um, you know, shout out, oh, I'm I'm a topper piece. Um, you know, obviously that's not essential and obviously we all have our own tastes, but I really love, you know, having the framed kind of aspect. So again, you've got them in the, you know, the natural colours with the gold kind of frames. 
Then you've got some in green shades and the green shades also, I've kind of like done the birds with green tinges as well. So absolutely love them. And then I did a page with kind of purples, which again, absolutely love, 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 love the um, purple kind of tinges and things on these. So absolutely gorgeous. And then finally, what I did was I just did a page and this is not printed borderless, so I do apologise, but there's the page just with some sheet music background. Again, it's just to give you options. You know, you might like it, you might not like it, but I thought this would be rather cute. Either that you could cut this down as a kind of belly band portion, you know, including a bit of the sheet music and use that in its entirety. Obviously, you'd probably lose some because that's going to be too tall for a page as it is. Or what you could do is you could cut a portion here, so like the line of three, and then you could fold it over into some sort of trifold. So those were just, again, just, you know, kind of suggestions as to what I thought you could use this for by having the sheet music. So not you know, not the only ways that you could use it, but just suggestions. So that's that one. And then you've got the vintage images. So I'm just again going to show you the large ones. So you've got the large ones here. Oh my goodness, don't you love these colours? Oh, I just love them. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I actually seem to be becoming more and more colour obsessed. And yeah, the more I try and stop myself, the more colour obsessed I'm becoming. Ah, oh, so we have this with the tills and the gold frames. Wow, isn't that just a feast for the eyes? So we've got those ones. We've got these, which are much more dulled down um, background. Absolutely love the background page, don't you? Just so pretty. Um, and then we've got these couple of images. Um, and again, you know, they're set on top of like a collage page. This is actually kind of a similar page to what's in the Junk Journal Basics Kit 2. Um, and again, you've got the ones with the gold frames. And then exactly as the other ones, I've got the, in the smaller versions, you've got the, you know, not neutral, but you know, the, the normal coloured um, toppers with the gold frames. And then you've got a purple one. So tinges of purples throughout all of the elements. And then you've got a green one. Again, tinges of greens coming through. And then here you've got the one with the sheet music again, you know, for exactly the same reasons, just because I thought this gives a lot of different flexibility. Like I said, cutting them down into little trifold pieces or, you know, however you like. Or if, you know, you didn't want to fussy cut the frames by having the sheet music, you could just kind of tear around and you'd have a bit of sheet music there backing onto that as well. So just, you know, trying to give kind of the maximum options really. So let's have a look and see what we can do with these. So I have bought along. Now, this is a misprint. As you can see, my printer was kind of running out of ink here. Um, and I've just coffee dyed this. So I will probably use the back of this rather than, you know, this with the green. Not that I don't like it, but yeah, I would just probably prefer to use the coffee dye. I've also got this sheet of coffee dye, but we probably won't get time to use them both. So I just wanted to kind of like do a quick video showing that, you know, if you had topper pieces, for example, and really had, you know, very little else in the way of supplies or, you know, um, papers or anything else, just by having toppers is going to kind of like, um, what's the word? It'd be sufficient. It would be enough. You know, you really don't need hardly anything other than your toppers to make something absolutely gorgeous. So let's use these, yeah, let's use the vintage. I think what we do, we do a vintage one and a bird one. So hold on a second. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. I went to do it and suddenly realised I had not even brought my scissors along. So yeah, failed at the first the first hurdle. So I'm going to take this. Now let's just make, um, you know, a little kind of tag with this. Obviously, I would have perhaps made something a bit more elaborate, but because I've got this on the back, you know, I want to kind of try and hide this if possible. Actually, I'm just going to check just before I do, because perhaps I could even use this side with the birds. Oh, it's not great, is it? Oh, not great. It is frustrating when the printer is um, running out of ink and then it continues to print, isn't it? So yeah, let's just cut a couple of um, tag shapes from this. Now, I don't use a um, template or anything for my tags. You know, hence they all are obviously random shapes, uh, sizes really. But I quite like that, to be honest. I think, you know, it's much more fun than having all your tags the same, the same size, isn't it? So, 
yeah we can just take that one down like that um as you can see made a horrendous job there of cutting it not straight at all okay right and then all i'm going to do i'm just going to pull in some um book page i think so again you know me being me i've got loads of rubbish all over my desk that i can just pull in so you know works out pretty handy so i'm just going to just tear some book page down and we can just literally you know cover that with the book page now i'm just wondering actually whether if i did it the other side i mean yeah i have still got obviously a lot of that green showing but let me just cut one of these images out. I haven't decided which one I'm going to use. Let's take this one. And obviously a lot of these images, they've been kind of incorporated with the French collection papers um, and the bird one, obviously, um, with the bird collection papers. So, you know, hopefully they should tie in really nicely with your, well, with all the collections papers, hopefully. Um, but, you know, if the bird ones would obviously tie in very well with the birds and these with the French. But having said that, you know, if you wanted more of a contrast, you might find it better to mix them up. So instead of putting like the birds with the bird papers, which maybe that would be a little bit much, you know, maybe mix the birds with like the damask papers or, you know, the, I don't know, William Morris or something like that, because actually maybe that would be you know a bit more fun I don't know so anyway just cutting this out I don't think I'm going to like this with that green if I'm truthful but yeah I mean I think it would look better without the green won't it so yeah okay, let's just turn that over yeah I mean it does doesn't it I mean I was trying to just kind of embrace the green but to be honest you can try all you like but at the end of the day if you don't like it you're just not gonna like it are you so i've got some fly sheet here and you know my understanding the fly sheet is you know the blank pages that you get just inside the covers of a book so i'm not sure whether i've ever used this glue before okie dokie Oops. so i'm just going to cover my tag with this this fly sheet page okay Okie dokie. So, and this is just my Anita's tacky glue. That's, you know, my go-to glue, really, um, that I tend to use. So, just go over like that. Okay. Right, now, you can probably see, this has got some scribbles on. This is how it was when I bought this book. I mean, I personally quite like that. I think that's quite pretty. So, I might actually put it that way up and have those scribbles. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps, yeah. Perhaps I won't. Only because I think, well, if I'm selling this, somebody else who receives that might think, oh, she's used dirty paper. So, yeah. Although I quite like that. You know, maybe not everybody would. So, yeah. Perhaps get rid of that. Okay. So, we've just copied that down on there like that. Let me just mop up those dabs of blue. Okie dokie. Right. Now, I'm just going to cut that down. Like this come on like that okay gorgeous okay right so i'm going to just put this one down running along the side of this page now again as you can see i've left this tatty edge you know where it's been torn from the book I love those torn edges from the books, um, you know, and yeah, like with the, um, you know, that kind of bit of writing, I'm not saying that that's everybody's cup of tea, but I really like those, you know, what I would call like a tatty edge there. I think that just adds a lot of character to that, but you know, again, each to their own, isn't it? So just cause, you know, just cause I like it doesn't mean that it's going to be everybody's thing. So we've got that. Now I'm just wondering whether if I added some other book page to add a bit of kind of contrast. So this one here, for example, this is from a completely different book. 
I'm thinking would just give a different look to the tag. So perhaps we'll have it. Do I want it there? Now let me just bring my topper in and sort of see. Oh, I don't know now. Should we have it there? Just going to tear it down slightly. Yeah, maybe more like that. So, oops, sorry, flicking my dry wipe around. Okay. So, yeah, just glue that one down. Okay. Right, then my topper, my focal point. So I'm going to ink all this stuff, oops, all this stuff up. So just going to ink around the edge. Now, as you can probably see, I mean, I've not actually made this like a tag shaped piece um, because I actually quite like tags sometimes just rectangular. So I'm not going to cut those corners or anything. I'm going to leave it literally a rectangular tag. And I think that's quite nice. Again, just inking my edges of my topper like that, okay? And we can have that in the background there. Now, another thing that you could then do is you could obviously take another one and you could kind of like layer it up. You know, like we talked about doing almost like a decoupage. So I'm just going to take this. Oh, do you know, I'm actually wishing I'd used this green one, to be honest. Mm. Oh, this is a tough choice. Because uh, I was going to cut the hot air balloon out and pop it over. But now I'm thinking, oh, do, would I rather have the green on there? No, I'm going to, right, I'm going to stick with this. Let me take the purple one. I just, sounds ridiculous but yeah <laughs> just because I really love the green one yes that's right I'm trying to hoard it I mean what's wrong with me so again going to just take that hot air balloon oh, not making a good job of cutting this because of course it's kind of circular which is my worst shape to cut oh my goodness not good not good at all oh my gosh come on like that okay right so yeah so obviously that's got slightly a purple kind of tinge going on but that's fine so just ink that up a little bit and that will sit on there and I'm going to use my hot glue to kind of give that a little bit of lift as I stick it on now this one, I'm just wondering whether I could have this kind of poking out so as we've got like a green frame coming out behind. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Okay. I was just determined, obviously, to use that green frame somewhere. I just really love the green. It's so lovely, isn't it? Honestly, I mean, I thought, oh, let's go for neutral. And then, you know, like always i can't quite stick at neutral what is wrong with me and like i say i seem to be actually getting worse and worse so i think yeah the more that time goes by the more drawn to color i seem to be and you know like with all these things it might just be that that's your natural style the longer you craft for the more your natural kind of style actually does come out and maybe you know my natural style is maybe just garish bright colours I don't know but yeah it definitely seems to be heading that way doesn't it so I'm kind of thinking you know if you layer them up and you know this is as well another way to make more of your kits make your kits really work for you so you know once you've kind of bought a kit don't limit yourself on you know how you're going to use it you can do all sorts of things now I'm thinking dab on some paint. I'm just having a look round. I'm not sure I've got any gold left, which is very unfortunate. So yeah, I'm kind of thinking maybe going with some of this. Mm, I'm just kind of glancing around to see whether I can see any gold paint anywhere. 
I mean, I really love gold paint, so I tend to use it quite quickly when I get it. Um, I have got my Inca gold. Well, perhaps I could use the Inca gold. I don't know. Let's just try this. So this is that, um, oh gosh, what does it say? It's deco art. It's a uh, bronze something. I don't know. Bronze something. Metallic paint. Um, obviously it's not gold, but I'm just going to see what this would look like. So because I'm thinking, you know, if we used some of this, Obviously, what we're trying to demonstrate here is using very minimal supplies, but showing that if you've got a topper piece, you know, minimal supplies is going to be fine. So all I'm going to do is, I think, let's just see if I were to just like smoosh that into the page. Not sure what I'm best off picking it up with, to be honest, but... There we go, kind of like dab that on. So I'm just going to go in with that around on my background. Okay. Maybe not everywhere, but like that. Okay, now I'm going to dry this off with my heat tool because this particular paint is not the fastest drying. Um, yeah, I think it would benefit from being dried. Okay. Even drying it with the heat tool, I can see it's still not drying in a few places. So. dry now I mean it might be slightly wet in one or two places but hopefully hopefully dry enough so yeah I'm going to take my green frame and we're just going to place that down now I'm just going to use my tacky glue for this just like we did with the book page so we just pop that down like that okie dokie so we could put in that over to the side because the other one is going to sit on top of it with this I was going to say framing it, but you know, well, I guess, guess framing it, just poking out behind like that. So we've just got sort of a bit of colour there. And then the hot air balloon, we're going to kind of glue, but raised slightly. So in fact, I'm thinking from that perspective, perhaps I will also glue this one raised slightly. Now, also just wondering whether we might put some um, lace in at this point. So possibly some lace underneath our frame. Let's just see what lace I've got laying around. I uh, can't see much actually at the moment, which is very unusual. Um, oh gosh, come on. Nope. Oh, right, so I've got some here. Okay. I was hoping to have, um, you know, my kind of go-to this is my go-to lace, which is this ivory. Um, I don't only have this tiny amount. I've probably got loads of it somewhere, but it's obviously just buried somewhere and I can't see it. Um, right, let's just take that bit off. So I'm kind of thinking if I were to pop that down there, it's very slightly hanging out. Do you see what I mean? So. You know, it's barely even there, but just gives a little tiny bit of interest. I'm actually thinking maybe it would be better this side because then, you know, we've got that green over that side. The only thing is I don't want it looking like it's got three things, if you see what I mean. So actually, from that perspective, I think this side is better. So I'm just going to cut that down. Okay, so I'm going to put it, I think, hanging quite a, a bit because I do want it to, you know, to show up. So yeah, I'm going to kind of like dangle it out quite a bit down there. Now I'm just going to, oops. Sorry, I'm just checking that that's the right way up. So yeah, I think it is. Right, let's check. So we've got to have it hanging quite low like that. Okay, right, now I'm going to hot glue this down and I know I talk about this all the time, but 
I just use my hot glue because it's quick. And when you're doing videos, of course, you don't want people just sat there having to watch you press things down. And the hot glue also, I mean, that just goes straight through that lace. And then I know that everything is glued and attached there. So like that. Okay. And then my hot air balloon, I'm going to just have raised up again. I have to be honest and say, slightly regretting that colour of hot air balloon. Um, I wonder if we could use this blue instead. I don't know why I pulled that to the blue. I mean, I wasn't really going to see what that looked like by doing that, was I? So let's take this one down. Okay. Oh gosh, glass is on again. Right, I'm just going to cut into that frame just because I'm now thinking, oh, I might want to hoard that lovely green frame for something else. <laughs> don't know whether I am, but, you know. Okay. Like that. Oh, come on. Honestly, why I have chosen to cut out something that's round... I have no idea because I do not like cutting out round round items to be honest. They're not not the best, are they? Right. Oh gosh, no. I've... Right. For some reason this hot air balloon I think has kind of lost its identity now. Oh gosh, yeah. An awful awful. Right. Scrap that. We are not not using that, obviously. Oh, that was awful, wasn't it? Absolutely awful. I'm just wondering whether I could use this. So, just going to cut this portion of the frame out. Okay. Like that. Okie dokie. Oh dear. My cutting's not great today. Don't know what's going on, but yeah, it's not very good. Not good at all. Right, there we go. Oh my goodness. Come on. Right, there we go. Let me just ink around here because what I was wondering was whether I could cut some of this down to have in the corners. So yeah, I'm going to take this straight across here. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut this down like that. Oh my goodness. And then here, like that. Okay, there we go. So, I mean, it's, it's quite tiny, um, you know, from a thin point of view, so it's not going to be the easiest thing to glue down, but I think it does look very nice. So we could have it there. And then the other one, we could just do exactly the same. Cut that down here. Okay, oh my goodness. Oh, come on, like that. Maybe I have there. Oh my gosh, how beautiful does that look? Oh, I love how that looks. It's so, so, so pretty. So for these, um, yeah, I'm just going to wet glue these, I think. So like that. Okay, so that one in there. Again, just press that down. Oops, my wipe now seems wet. That's obviously from mopping up the, um, you know, the desk and stuff. So oh, not great. And then we're just going to, yeah, pop this down here. And pop that one there, like that. Oh my goodness. How gorgeous does that look? It's so scrumptious, isn't it? And to be honest, I mean, I personally don't even think that that needs anything else. I think it just looks absolutely yummy, just exactly how it is. Obviously, you could put more things on. I don't know what's happened to that. Oh, there it is, that hot air balloon. Um, do we want to have that on there? 
I mean, I guess it kind of makes it more 3D-ish, doesn't it? Oh, I can't decide now. Uh, again, I wish I was live and I could hear you guys. You're probably shouting one way or another saying, put it on or don't put it on. Let's put it on, shall we? Because I've, I've cut it out now. There we go. Right, there we go. So I've put lots of hot glue on there so that this is going to slightly kind of be raised to the underneath. I am not pressing that in you know, hardly at all actually, so that that really is raised. So if I just show you from the side, to be honest, I don't think the camera's picking that up, but maybe it does if I do a certain angle. You could just see, I mean, there's a very slight gap. It's not like the foam dots or anything like that, but it's just brought it up a little bit. Isn't that just the most gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous tag? I absolutely love it. And, you know, I've not put a tab on there or anything. I've just kind of left it as it is. I mean, obviously, you could put a tab on. I mean, I've got this, actually, from a different project that I've done recently. Let's just see. This, you know, it's just floating about. But, yeah, I mean, we could just pop a tag on there. A tab, sorry, not, not tag. Tab, maybe even in the... Maybe there. Yeah, maybe just to kind of like finish it off. So I'm just going to put, again, a little bit of hot glue, you know, just for the instantaneous um, qualities. So, yeah, we just pop that down there and then just another little bit of glue here. There we go. Oh, my goodness, how gorgeous does that look? <gasps> I love it. Absolutely love it. So that's, um, you know, one that we could do. So should we do another one, um, you know, and we'll do another tag so that we get, you know, showing different looks for tags. Um, so this page now, I'm probably going to cut down this way. Like this. So. Oh, my goodness. What an awful job I've made of the cutting. Oh, talk about wonky. Monkey down the side. Okie dokie. Right, so we've got that one. Um, so, yeah, let's just use um, similar things again. So I've got some more book page here, which, yeah, just pull in some more of the book page. Okay. And, yeah, should we just, well, we we'll just tear off this portion here. So, in fact, let's just go across here like that. Okie dokie. Right, so I'm just going to glue this down. Um, yeah, now I am going to have to find something in a second to put on the back of this. You know, to cover up that back. I haven't decided yet what to bring in, but I should have a look in a second and see what I've got. So we just pop this one down here. So, you know, I mean, what I'm trying to say is probably even if you don't have many oh my goodness look what i've done here to on the paper even if you don't have many kind of actual what i would call junk journal supplies you know if you have something you could use as a topper obviously you could buy something like these um you know or or any other you know i'm not necessarily saying mine but yeah any other um and then you've probably got some book page. So I'm sure that you could probably kind of conjure up some book page from somewhere and use something like that. This just here is some buff coloured paper or card, um, which again, you know, you maybe have got. But actually, I'm going to do something else instead of that, because just in case you haven't got any of this, I'm sure we've all got some of this. So this is Amazon packaging paper. So just sticking with the, you know, very, very, very accessible supplies here. So, yep, if you don't have the craft card, don't worry. This is Amazon packaging paper. So I'm thinking just tear this down, uh, cut this down now. So it's going to be straight to be able to pop on to the tag like this. Okay. So, yep like that so I mean straight away this is looking very different to the last one um you know because obviously we've got the the packaging paper it instantly has a different um appearance doesn't it so yeah kind of transformed it 
from the other one. So again, just glue this down. Oh my gosh, I am making the worst job of this. I do apologise. I don't know what's going on with my cutting, with my gluing, with anything today, to be honest. It's just one of those bad crafting days. So what I will do is I said that I needed to back this onto something. So to save me looking around for something else, I'm going to back that onto the other bit of the Amazon packaging paper. So, you know, totally accessible crafting, totally accessible. You know, even if you had no crafting supplies at all, you've probably got something that you could use as a topper piece and you've probably got some old book page somewhere and you've probably got some sort of either Amazon packaging or not necessarily Amazon, but you know, packaging paper of some sort. Mustn't, mustn't constantly be saying Amazon. Um, it's just that we have a lot of Amazon packaging in my house, but yeah, I'm sure you've got some sort of packaging. Or if you don't have packaging paper, you've maybe got some sort of brown paper bag or, you know, like from, I don't know, um, I mean, even like a McDonald's bag. If that was clean and hadn't, you know, touched the food or anything, you could use that, you know, the inside of the bag. So, you know, these are totally kind of, everybody has these kinds of things in their homes. Okay. And then, you know, if you have got a printer and you could buy something to use as your toppers, then that's fantastic. If you haven't, then, you know, I don't know, maybe look for some book pages or, you know, images from magazines or something that you could pull in and use as your toppers. I mean, hey, if you can paint or draw, maybe you would be able to make your own topper pieces. I mean, personally, you know, I would not be able to. Um, but if you can, then, wow, I mean, that would look amazing. So, yeah, maybe kind of do something like that. But yeah, I mean, definitely I know my limits and mine would look absolutely appalling. Um, but if you can, then that would be fantastic. So I just need to trim this edge down because I have made this wonkier and wonkier each time I've cut it. Right, hopefully that looks okay. So this is my side for journaling. It is a little bit crumpled, you know, it's got some kind of crease marks. Doesn't worry me. I mean, we are making a junk journal after all. And I know I say this all the time, but, you know, it's easy to kind of get hung up on thinking, oh, that's not good enough. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. So, right, let's have a look and see. We're going to do a bird one so that we have a different look. Now, I'm aware that I've got these oops, um, left from the last one. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I should incorporate those. Done shoddy cutting because I did not think of using this previously. So this is not going to be as kind of neat and brilliant as the green ones were in you know on the last tag but hopefully it would still work enough and would look good enough so just take that down like that okay right so yeah I'm going to cut that down I quite like them mitered again that's you know just yeah neither here nor there really you know mitered or any other way would be fine but I kind of quite like the mitered because if you cut them at the corners, then of course they are going to be mitered. So the mitered seems to, you know, suit itself quite well to, to these. So, right, let's just take this one down like that. Okay. Right, and go there and then just, okay. Like that, right. So, love how that looks. Right, let me just put these in the bin. These little loft cuts. Now, what do I want to do? Shall we use one of the purpley tinged pictures because we're going for like, you know, these purple corners that we're going to incorporate on here. So I'm thinking, you know, just to keep with the purple theme, might be good to, oops, to have a purple Oh my goodness, purple image. Um, shall we go for this one? So let's just cut into that. Now this has been printed on, um, it's photo quality paper. 
and it's I think it's too I can never remember I'm so sorry it's because I order whatever is available at the time so it can fluctuate between 210 and 250 GSM it just depends what I can get hold of at the time um, I do order it from Amazon generally and yeah I'm kind of flexible with the brands and I'm flexible with the GSM of the paper um, you know because obviously sometimes you can get hold of one thing sometimes you can't so you know so long as it's a photo quality paper for an inkjet printer and so long as it's 200 210 preferably but 200 or thicker then that's you know that's kind of good enough I think okay right so just ink around here like that I'm going to just ink around these like that okay now I'm wondering whether you know what we did on the last one where we had that other frame kind of hanging out the side whether to do that kind of thing on here because definitely that all adds to the kind of um you know impact that you're going to have so I'm thinking should we have some more book page on top of the brown paper so maybe just kind of like a a slither somewhere here yeah let's do that so oops and this is just some vintage book page it's not hugely old i think it's like from the 50s something like that i mean i think anything over 20 years is classed as vintage and i've said that loads of times but i mean that's what i've heard i don't know whether that's oh, strictly speaking whether that's really accurate but yeah that's that's what i've always understood it to be as anything over 20 years is vintage which that's crazy isn't it I mean 20 years is not a lot in the scheme of things but hey that's that's what's classed as vintage apparently right so now I'm going to take one of those um gold frames and just put that in the back side so or in the back side in the to the side so I'm going to just take this one only because this just happened to be at the corner of the page so it was kind of like accessible okay and just yep Put that one down. Okie dokie. Like that. Oh, it's such a grey drab day today. And I'm just going to put this out out there and I say it all the time yes I do feel my head so if it's gorgeous where you are it's not gorgeous here today it's it's drab and boring drab and rubbish right so yeah I'm kind of thinking like that I mean we could even have it I guess that way it's quite nice now do we want to have those gold splatters I did really like those um like I said it's not gold it's actually you know it's actually this bronze color but it did look pretty so and I think it does kind of add to it so you know this is just um for illustrating if you don't have access to other things so and those other things you know include you know not only like you don't have access to tons of you know craft papers and things but maybe you haven't got access to you know some stamps and things like that so this is just, you know, for those people who don't have a whole host of craft things. So, you know, because we all kind of have to start out, don't we? And, you know, when you do start out, the chances are you won't have a load of things to be using. But I think you can still get absolutely gorgeous results, you know, with actually not that much um, in the way of supplies. So, whoops, sorry, making a lot of mess with this. Right, let's just wipe this down. This time I'm just going to actually use a wet, wet wipe rather than smother my dried one in gold paint. So let's get rid, of, ooh, get rid of that. Okay, right, now I'm going to dry that again with the heat tool because if I don't, it will be dabbing everywhere. Okay. Okay. 
like I say, this is not the fastest drying paint, unfortunately. So, you know, the patinas and things like that, they dry really, really quickly. This, you know, it's not the fastest drying, but it's okay. It's definitely, it's okay. Right, there we go. So, you can probably see, I mean, it's bent my paper around a bit, but that's fine. Now I've got some lift here, which goes on sometimes, you know, like if I haven't gone right to the very edge of the paper. And that's where sometimes I say, you know, I cut in by a millimetre, because then if I've missed the glue right to the edge like here, it then, you know, overcomes that problem. Alternatively, obviously, you can just go down the edge and, you know, try and glue it retrospectively. So like that. OK, let's just make sure all that's cleared up. Okie dokie. Right, now which way up was I having this? I think I was having it this way up. Uh, right, do we want to have it like this? Yeah, I think something like that. So again, just going to glue this down here. Now with regards to lace and things, so, you know, talking of people who perhaps don't have many supplies, I obviously added lace to that last one. I will probably add a little bit of lace to this one. So if you don't have any lace and things like that, you may have something like, um, I don't know, an old top or, you know, something like that. Or even, you know, I don't know, if you've got kids, you know when little girls have those ankle socks with the little bit of lace around? Even something like that would be fine to actually be able to kind of use some lace. So, you know, you don't have to kind of have an... Uh, a huge abundance of lace but just lace from anything or anywhere would be fine um you know you might have an old top or something like that that you could use so yeah kind of just have a look around and you'll probably be surprised actually what you have got you know that perhaps you've forgotten about so i'm very lucky because i do have um you know a big sort of stash of lace that being said, you know, obviously, when I first started out, I didn't really have much in the way of lace, um, you know, because I'd been a scrapbook scrapbooker previously. And to be honest, we didn't really use much lace. So, you know, lace is kind of like not a new thing for me, but, you know, it's a supply that I didn't have kind of a ton of previously. So just use you know whatever you can kind of get your hands on if you don't have lace but you want something to give a bit of texture just use like a bit of um fabric so and again things like you know even old school shirts or something like that if you've got kids um they would be fine failing that you know if you've got maybe an old old shirt of your own or you know if you've got a husband or you know something like that um or even just like an old skirt or something or a tea towel or, you know, anything that you like. What I'm saying is to just get a little bit of texture, you probably, you know, you'll probably be surprised what you have got laying around the house that you could, could technically use. So I'm just going to put this little bit of lace down here. Now I've kind of taken care to not put it too far over that um, frame. And then I'm going to glue this down. And just like with the last one, I'm going to kind of, edge it right over so we've got plenty of the lace shown and plenty of the frame so again go quite heavy with my glue so that I'm going to get a bit of a raised effect so you know if you obviously don't have a hot glue gun because you know that is another thing that possibly you haven't got if you are new to crafting and it's not an essential item it is now you know one of my favorite items but I managed for years without a hot glue gun. Just use, you know, the glue that you do have. So let's just check which way around we want this. Got this one, which is much longer. So do we want that up there? I mean, I kind of quite liked it small. Um, but that being said, I'm probably going to have some lace somewhere. So... Yeah, maybe kind of something like that. So, right, let's just pop the lace on. So, just going to use my wet glue for the lace. Okay. Like that. Okie dokie, just trim that down. I mean, oh my goodness, doesn't this look so pretty? And, I mean, we've used 
hardly anything literally hardly anything on this um you know so yeah couldn't be simpler couldn't have used less in terms of you know supplies but oh my goodness doesn't it look gorgeous absolutely love it i mean that's partly because i just love color but yeah if you love color then you maybe think this looks pretty too if you don't you might think oh my goodness this is yet another awful colorful eyesore that she's made but yeah hopefully you do like it Right, now the only thing that I just realised I did not ink around the edges of this, so I'm just going to do that quickly. And just simple things like inking around the edges when you've not got a ton of supplies. If you've got some ink, if you don't have ink, use something else. You know, maybe get your coffee dye and paint it around the edges or just some paint or something like that, you know, because that actually adds quite a lot to that. You know, if you've not got a lot of supplies, so you don't have a lot of other things for interest on here, just by inking, that's brought that in. And so you've got now a level of interest there as well, if you see what I mean. Whereas when it was a plain piece of paper, it was, you know, it was lacking that other sort of layer of interest. So, yeah, that's kind of um, my top tips, really, for using toppers and things when you don't have kind of many junk journal supplies. So, you know, why an, essential, why an essential item, for me anyway, is a topper. Or, you know, not an essential item, but definitely an item that's going to make your crafting way, way, way easier. Um, so, yeah, I really hope that you like them. I think they look quite different, to be honest, you know, and they're pretty similar concepts. But, you know, the colours obviously are different and, you know, the... Um, overall look I think now looks pretty different so yeah let me know which one you prefer um I have to say I'm now kind of torn between the two I'm not sure I mean I love the greens on this but equally I do love these kind of purples so yeah let me know below which one is your favorite and um let me know what you think do you find toppers really 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 helpful like having a focal point or are you fine without having a focal point you know um you know let me know below what your thoughts are on that so yeah i hope this video was helpful and you know if you liked it then please do give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks then bye